Yeah, so we launched the Be American Smaller Companies Fund uh, really to profit off the sweet spot of the US market, investing in faster growing high quality companies and predominantly from the mid cap space. Our goal uh, was really not to ride a trend, but to profit off this interesting segment of the market. So most investors believe that uh, historically, uh, his, uh, small cap companies outperformed uh, large cap companies, and uh, this is true. But um, actually in the US, it has been the mid cap companies which uh, showed the strongest historical performance. And very interestingly, if you now look at the volatility, mid cap companies are just a little bit more volatile than large cap companies, but much less volatile than, than, than small cap companies. Therefore, the risk adjusted return profile is, uh, was historically uh, the highest and most interesting in the mid-cap space. And when you now look at the mid-cap uh, asset class, and I always, I always scratch my head uh, when I see that investors are still underexposed, underexposed to these mid-cap companies, as these companies find themselves really in the most attractive stage of their life cycle. If you now look at the whole mid-cap uh, space, what historically has performed best it has been these faster growing companies and the high quality companies. Yeah, we wanted to have a, a larger universe of companies uh, we can invest in because you find a few uh, small cap uh, companies which fulfill already all the criteria we are looking for in, in a business. And like this, we can fish out of a universe of approximately 2,500 uh, companies and profit at an earlier stage of, these, uh, of some high quality uh, small cap companies. And we see uh, in the US uh, small cap companies in a range from 500 million to 5 billion US dollars and mid cap companies in a range from 5 billion to 25 billion US dollars in market capitalization. And um, this can vary quite a bit uh, depending on which uh, uh, index uh, providers you're, you're looking at. But if you compare this to the European equivalent, uh, the market capitalization ranges are actually much, uh, much higher in the US. The small mid cap space is really an El Dorado for stock pickers uh, in the US uh, and is actually bigger than the whole uh, European equity market. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's true that uh, the core of the fund uh, will be, of course, uh, these faster growing companies. But uh, we diversify the portfolio with companies uh, showing uh, a different risk return profile. At BLI, we, we classify uh, the companies in three different uh, segments. So we have the growing free cheese companies. In my case, the core of the fund, these are these faster growing companies. And um, in this category, uh, uh, we'll be always uh, invested between, uh, we'll be always invest in this category between 50 and 75% uh, of the portfolio. And then you have uh, the consistent earners category. In the consistent earners category, uh, the focus lies really on the consistency of, of the business. And this category will represent always between uh, 20 and 40% uh, of the portfolio. This is a category I really like, uh, as uh, it takes uh, further risk out of the portfolio next to our quality approach we have. And last but not least, uh, we have the established value uh, uh, category, really not the focus of the fund. And uh, these uh, companies uh, in this category uh, find themselves in a, a special uh, situations. And these special situations can then lead to very attractive valuations. Maximum 15% of the portfolio will be invested in this category. Very well, the Beer American Smaller Companies Fund follows the same business-like investing approach as all of the equity strategies at BLI. Uh, we perceive businesses really like long-term company owners. We uh, invest just in simple businesses with clear and transparent business models. In companies uh, we believe have a sustainable competitive advantage, are highly profitable and can reinvest their cash at high rates of return. And lastly, um, we, don't, we, we want to make sure we don't overpay these high quality uh, companies.
if you now uh, uh, look at what makes my fund uh, really different, is that I um, that m the faster growing companies uh, take take a much bigger part of the portfolio. Therefore, this profitable growth equation becomes uh, much more important. And it's really these faster growing quality companies, these faster growing quality compounders that I'm, I'm looking for. And it's exactly there where most shareholder value is created over time. Yeah, actually many. Uh, 31 companies out of the 48 companies I own today in the fund I own uh, uh, since launch. Seven companies uh, have been acquired since, and most of the other companies uh, were actually sold for uh, the right reason, for good reason. What do I mean by this? Uh, is that actually these companies came too big due to their uh, per strong performance in market capitalization. And there's maybe just, uh, just a handful of companies that we sold uh, because uh, the, the underlying investment thesis uh, really fundamentally uh, changed. So, we like to uh, leave our quality companies uh, do their job and compound uh, in, in, in value over time. And therefore, our, our, our turnover rate is pretty low. Yeah, it's true. It's been a, a tough market for smaller cup managers in the last years. Uh, small and mid-cap uh, companies were really out of favor uh, with investors uh, since 2017. But nevertheless, we were able to perform very well in this uh, market environment. And uh, if, you, if you look what, what has performed best as well in the small mid-cap space, it has been as well by far uh, the technology uh, companies, uh, followed uh, by the uh, healthcare uh, sector. And uh, we at BLI, due to our bottom-up uh, investment approach, find most of our quality companies in the technology sector, in the healthcare sector, in the industrial sector, and the two consumer sectors. So our sector allocation can deviate uh, quite a bit towards our, our official benchmark. Without going into too much detail uh, uh, into the performance attribution since launch, but it has been really our strong stock picking and our bias towards mid-cap companies, which explains our strong relative uh, performance. And just to a lesser extent, uh, our sector allocation uh, has helped. But uh, more importantly, uh, we achieved this being the least volatile fund and being the fund with the uh, lowest uh, uh, market drawdown of the whole uh, Lipper peer group. Therefore, we achieved uh, historically since launch very strong risk-adjusted returns. Yeah, so we at uh, BLI believe that uh, to outperform the, the market on a consistent basis, you really have to stick to a, a stringent investment uh, approach. I believe personally that uh, our proven investment strategy is the only one which makes sense over the long term. And this, by the way, the reason why I joined BLI in 2014. If we now look at, uh, at uh, a yeah, secret ingredient without giving away too many of my secret ingredients, uh, I believe that as an, an, an investor, uh, you really have to be disciplined and patient when it comes to investing. And because Mr. Market gives you from time to time the opportunities to add some high quality companies at a reasonable price, and then you have to be ready to act. Maybe coming now to a special uh, uh, ingredient, which I believe makes uh, my fund, uh, uh, gives my fund a unique uh, profile. Uh, I like to combine uh, the consistent earners, uh, which I talked before, so these more lower beta companies, often from the consumer staples uh, sector, together with the faster growing companies. As this takes out further risk, of the portfolio and uh, gives my fund a much more defensive uh, growth profile. And actually, since launch of the fund, uh, when markets were uh, weaker, uh, we, due to this, uh, I believe, due to this approach we have, uh, I believe the fund held up uh, much better. 
And um, as you all know, it's much more important to outperform on the downside than it is to outperform on the upside for the overall long-term uh, performance. I actually believe it's, uh, it's an advantage uh, being far away of the noise of the major financial uh, centers uh, and that it leads to a, to a better long-term performance. Um, I am less distracted by short-term uh, news and can really focus on what is important. I am two to three times a year uh, in the US at uh, specialized investor conferences where I can meet all the companies uh, of interest. And I profit when, uh, as well when I'm in the US to organize trips to the company's headquarters. So I have all the access uh, I need to, to, to be able to do a good job and able to uh, understand uh, uh, all the fundamentals and fundamental drivers uh, which are important uh, in a company. Yeah, it's always uh, difficult to time the market, but uh, I believe over the long term, uh, every investor should take advantage of this interesting uh, segment of the market. But maybe just remark, uh, one remark, uh, if you look at uh, look at when small mid-cap companies performed best. It has been actually uh, in the coming out uh, the early years, early cycle years coming out of a recession. Uh, if you look at the last 10 recessions, uh, each time smaller cap companies outperformed large cap companies coming out of a recession. So if history rhymes, it could be actually a good entry point.